Coming up, are you lazy or are you just burned out? We'll walk you through that. And then a coffee cup interview test, a viral sensation. I'll break that down. And then one of my favorite personal stories of unexpected opportunities. Helping you win in your work life so that you're winning in the other areas of your life because work affects it all. I'm Ken. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'll never forget I took a call on this show not too very long ago, probably uh, in the last year and a half, two years. And immediately the woman told me how worried she was about her husband. He was in a rut, not moving around with any kind of juice, his confidence shattered, hadn't left the house in a while, had stopped looking for jobs. There was a period where he had looked and just hadn't had any luck. He had been laid off and you could tell that she was genuinely worried about him. And I remember she said something in describing what had happened to her husband and how he had been acting that had caused her concern. And she called me and said, Ken, I need help. And as she was describing at one point, she said, I don't think he's lazy, but, and I remember in a moment being instantly provoked to say the following. And I cut her off and I said, ma'am, can I tell you something? I don't think your husband is lazy. I don't think your husband's lazy. I think he's lost. If you, in your inner dialogue recently, or someone in your life that you care about, you've had a thought about them being lazy, I want you to consider this. Most people who are acting like they are lazy are not actually lazy. They're not lazy. They're lost. Lost means that you have no direction. And that lack of direction turns into hopelessness. And hopelessness makes us shut down. Now, let's just take you back just for a moment to a time in your life where you were lost. Could have been in the car before we had cell phones. It's, it cracks me up, by the way, how many of these younger people don't realize that this is what our maps used to look like. Like you printed it out and you're like, all right, honey, uh, what's next? You know, and you actually had to pay attention or you would miss the turn. Uh, I remember, Joe, and I know you remember this. I remember my dad getting out an atlas. Like, and laying it out on the dining room table before we'd go on vacation. You know what I'm talking about? Rand McNally. Yeah, 100%. He's laying it out, and he's, like, got the highlighter out. You know, this is what we got to go. And that, that joker, like, this was before you printed out directions on a computer. This was like, well, let me look here, and you got to, like, stare at that thing, and which, which this route goes to this route, and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, if you've ever been lost in the woods – on a hike, I'll tell you, I remember the time that I got lost. Um, I I was in a department store, and and I got separated from my mom and dad, right? Wasn't paying attention. My mom and dad would say, stay right here with me. And I got distracted. Maybe I thought it was fun to go run under a big rack of clothes and hide or something. Then you come out, and where's mom and dad? Yo. And I'll never forget the first time I got lost. And I, I was walking around mom, dad, and I'm sure they were looking for me. But I thought that I was in the middle of the earth, completely lost, having no idea where to go. And I remember just freezing. And luckily, a sales lady came upon me and heard me whimpering and crying. She found me. But I had just huddled, sat down next to a mannequin, given up all hope. That's what happens when someone loses a job. Whether they get laid off or get fired, they can't find their way back in. At some point, they get to the point where they go, I don't know where to go. I don't know what turn to take. And I'm just going to shut down. And that husband had shut down. Now, it looks like he's lazy. It presents as lazy. But when we dive deeper and we get underneath the symptom, we see that he wasn't lazy. He was lost. And I, rem I remember when she heard it that way, she saw him differently. And I want you to see your loved one differently. I want you to see yourself differently if you were in a season where you were lost and you've 
begun to think that you're lazy. You're not. So let's look at, let's not just talk about being lost. Let's go back. Because when we can go back and figure out how we got lost or how we can become lost, we can avoid becoming lost. So let's look at the first reason that people get lost. They make a bad decision. In other words, a wrong turn. And you know it's on you. You did something, said something, or didn't do what you were supposed to do. And we're not going to go through all the litany of possibilities here because you know you. But one option is you made a bad turn. You made a bad decision. You got yourself where you are in this place of feeling lost. So what happens is you begin to judge yourself. Then you begin to go through regret. And when you've got that judgment and shame and regret, what happens is is you begin to devalue yourself, devalue your decisions. I can't tell you how many people have called this show, and I can tell that the callers just got all kinds of doubt hanging on them. They don't believe in themselves. You stop trusting your ability to make a good decision to get unlost. The second option is life just happened. It just happened. A storm. Uh, a, 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 a pandemic came. You had no control over that, and it pushed you out. Cancer. Uh, maybe a divorce you didn't want. Getting fired or laid off. You, you had nothing to do with. You got caught in a storm. Life has its storms, and those storms, I want you to think of a, a sailboat uh, that is out in a body of water, and a big storm comes up unexpected and blows the boat off course. That's what's happened to you. You're suffering, and you're suffering from something that you had no control over, and now you think because you didn't have control over the storm that you have no control over getting out. But there is a solution. Let's talk about it. The first thing you got to do is you have to acknowledge where you are and how you got there. So I've given you the two ways that you get lost. If you made a bad decision, bad turn, own it. I did this. What can I learn from this? What was going on in my life? What caused me to make this bad turn? If if you were blown off course by a storm, then you get to acknowledge that and go, wait a second, this sucks, but I didn't have anything to do with it. So it's very important. If it was me, I got to learn from it and realize that I do have control over never making those bad decisions again. If it's a storm, something I didn't have control over, you go, you know what, that's life, it's going to happen. But you know what? Just because I've been blown off course does not mean that I'm done, that I'm a shipwreck, that I can't get back going. And so you've got to understand this. Uh, if, if, again, you made the bad turn, you have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself. If you didn't do it, you got to go, I don't have bad luck. This is life. And now we're truly able to accept how we got there. And listen, stop calling yourself lazy. Stop allowing yourself to think that you are lazy. You're not lazy. You're lost. And it doesn't matter how we got here anymore because we figured out how we got here. And now we're going to get back on the path. So stop licking your wounds. Stop calling yourself lazy. Realize that you're lost. And now you're going to go get back in the game. The positive self-talk is huge. Get back in the game get a job any job why for a victory get a paycheck and if you can't do that right away go serve somebody go help somebody don't sit around if you've done everything you can do and you're applying you're doing everything in those moments where you're down go help somebody who's got it way worse than you prove that you have some value because you do now why does all this matter because all of us are lost at some point in time in our lives. And we've got to understand how we got there. Understanding how we get there is how we figure out how to get back on track. You matter. You have what it takes. And the world needs what you have to offer. So I'm telling you, you aren't lazy. You're just lost. And you can get back. And I want to be a lighthouse for you so that you can see yourself and your path back to purpose. This is the Ken Coleman Show.
All right, let's talk about job interviews and how they are, you know, for most people, they have to be one of the most pressure-filled moments that you face in your life. And and in full disclosure, I haven't been in a job interview in years, and years and years and years and years and years, right? Like nine years ago, I joined Ramsey Solutions. This has been a long time. And so I'm out of practice. And before that, I hadn't been in one in a long time. So I, I'll bet you I've been in like five or six job interviews in my life. So, uh, you know, and, and I am a guy that likes pressure. You know, not everybody does. But I'm trying to be empathetic here and put myself in most people's shoes. And I've talked to people. It's a pressure-filled situation. So you're already under pressure. And so um, executives have their little things they're looking for. Everybody, every job interviewer, every hiring manager should have some things they're looking for in the interview process. Well, uh, one particular executive has got a little test. And he shared the test on a podcast, and it's gone viral. We're going to talk about it. Uh, it's called the coffee cup test, and it's a and it's a guy by the name of Trent Inez. He's in Melbourne, Australia, and he goes on to a popular business podcast called the Venture Podcast, and um, he tells uh, a story um, about how he uses this coffee cup test. And so here's what he does: he escorts the job uh, interview candidates to an office kitchen. And he offers them a cup of coffee uh, or some other beverage before he moves to the question. So this is essentially the icebreaker. You know, how you doing? Oh, yeah, come on over. Let's get a cup of coffee. Would you like a latte or whatever he says? Who knows? And uh, the candidates who don't offer to take their empty cups back to the kitchen. So essentially what happens is we go to a kitchen, we get a cup of coffee, we move into his office, and then he conducts the interview. And when the interview's done, his litmus test, the coffee cup test is, if the candidate does not offer to take his or her empty cup and maybe his, it's his cups, back to the kitchen at the end of the interview, uh, he is unlikely to give them a job offer. This is what he says about it. You can develop skills, you can gain knowledge and experience, but it really does come down to attitude. And the attitude that we talk a lot about is the concept of wash your coffee cup. He then goes on to explain he thinks that this test weeds out job candidates who wouldn't be a workplace culture fit. Um, and there's been a lot of comments on this. Uh, one one answer, and, and I'm going to go to Alex, the producer, here because I'm not on TikTok. He is. Uh, he's cooler than me. And and so I'm, I'm curious what the range of comments were. There's one that's cited here in the article. And then, Alex, I want to get your take. Uh, one, one user uh, on TikTok wrote, I feel like it's weird to wash your own cup in an interview when you're a guest there. I'd probably just ask what they want me to do with the cup. But I think that's the whole point. I don't think they're saying, the guy's not saying he wants you to wash your cup. He's saying, are you conscientious enough to say, I'm going to pick up my mess? And, uh, and so this user was like, I don't, so again, this is what's wrong with social media. I just want to point that part out. This person is commenting on something that the dude never said. Now, Alex, what were the range of comments? Were there, was it obvious to you when you scanned the TikTok that it was uh, a lot of support for or against this guy? I'm guessing a lot of people thought it was a a, a, a stupid move or a, a pinhead yeah. or a jerk move. Oh, yeah. Some people stooped as far as to say this was manipulative. This was, you know, uh, just in, in completely insane. And some people really loved it. They thought it was a, a great way to, to, to really see somebody's character in that, in an action like that. Right. So I see one here that says, I understand the spirit behind it, given that I hate people not cleaning up after themselves. Um, but it's not fair, accurate way of testing people. Okay, so so I come down on that. That user's comment is where I come down. And so here's, here, here's what my thinking is. Um, what if a person doesn't want the coffee? Are you can you can you judge someone's character? That's what I would say to this guy. I'd want to know. Surely that's happened. Did they throw the Mountain Dew bottle away or the right. Monster Energy? Well, what if you didn't ask them? What what if you asked them and and they said I don't want the drink. Thank you very much. So now what do you do? I mean, certainly this guy's got to have another way of of figuring out in the interview if this person is 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 who he thinks they are. 
or who he wants them to be. Let me say that. Now, here, here's my beef with this whole process. I'm, I'm a guest on a lot of podcasts. I wonder if this guy's not just throwing this out there and he's making a bigger deal of it than it is. That's the first question I have, keeping it real. Guy goes on a podcast and he thinks he's Mr. Spiffy, Mr. Smart Guy. I do it. I'm always looking to make an impression on a podcast. I'm just being honest. I'm not saying the guy doesn't do it. I'm saying I don't buy that this test is as big a deal as he made it out. So I'm going to throw some cynicism out. That's my first thing. I'm calling BS on that's like the litmus test. That's my first thing. Could be wrong. Second, I started out this segment saying a lot of people in a job interview, it is the most pressure-filled moment of their lives. And who among us is super in the moment and super thoughtful and super polite and super aware in a job interview? And so let me take you there. All right, so you're sweating bullets. You're trying to impress this guy. You got a cup of coffee on the table. He goes, all right, Ken. Enjoyed our time. We'll get get back in touch with you. Let me tell you the first thing I'm thinking. I'm like, geez, I hope I nailed that. It close well. So I want to shake him in the shake his hand, look him in the eye and go, hey, thanks for the opportunity. I'm so grateful that you gave me that. Man, I'm so great. Loved it. Loved it. And, and, and so at that point, I'm already up. Like, I'm, I'm up. I'm standing up. I've shook his hand. Hey, I'm up. Uh, you know, I know I went out of frame. I don't care. But that's what I'm doing, right? And and guess where the coffee cup is? Nathan, I won't do that to you again. But guess where the coffee cup is? The coffee cup, for me in that moment, is nowhere on the planet. I'm here. I'm up here. I've stood up. The coffee cup is down here. I'm thinking, I got to walk out. My time is done. I thank this guy. And, and if I'm lucky, Alex, if I'm lucky, as I turn to walk out with this guy, because if he's doing it the way that I think he's doing it, he's kind of stepping up, he's standing you up, and he's moving you out the door. And he wants to see if you're going to go, oh, uh, what, what, what should we do with the cups? Well, let me just tell you something, where Ken Coleman's brain is. My brain is eye contact, gratitude, Final impression as I walk out. The last thing on my freaking mind is the stupid coffee cup. It's the last thing on my mind. So my judgment, I think it's a bogus test. I don't think it reveals much at all. It just may reveal how present someone is because they're not freaking out. That's not a character thing, man. I think this is silly. I think he's trying to make a big deal on a podcast and he struck gold. Folks, I'm so excited to tell you a story that happened to me today. You're not even prepared for what I'm about to tell you. The crew doesn't know. It's it's mind-boggling to me. And uh, I'm going to share. It's a fun story. I'm not sure it has any redeeming value other than you're going to love this story. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, if you're enjoying the show, it's helping you. Would you help me help more people by telling people about the show? If you're on YouTube, uh, like the videos that you're watching with that thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and share. If you're listening via the podcast app, uh, give us a follow and a five-star review and share. Also, the number one tool I have for helping people get self-awareness so that they are confident and clear about their direction going forward is called the Get Clear Assessment. It's less than 20 minutes. going to measure what you do best, talent. It's going to reveal to you the type of work you love, that's passion, and then it will show you what results actually motivate you to get fired up, to get out of bed in the morning, and that's a mission. And so you get all those results in a purpose statement plus a detailed guide on who you really are and the work you were born to do. It's at kencoleman.com slash assessment, kencoleman.com slash assessment. Okay. So this morning, um, my wife reminded me late last night, and by the way, full disclosure, she tells me last night, Alex, I'm already in bed reading. I got the readers on. I'm all tucked in snug as a bug in a rug. And I'm reading my book, reading a biography right now. And she says, don't forget tomorrow we have coffee Meet the headmaster. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. But I don't say that. Yeah, I did not, that, That's all internal dialogue. And so this morning at 8 o'clock, I had to be at a local school where one of my kids goes. 
it's a private school, great independent school, and so they're very serious about all. The, and so it's very, it's like it's 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 suggested heavily that you come to one of these things. So several months ago, Stacy Stacy gives me several dates that I have to choose from, and so I choose this morning. And I was late because I had to get one kid to school, so I'm already eight minutes late. Now, folks, understand my attitude about this is already really poor. I would rather. Uh, Alex, take a power drill and drill a hole in my head live on camera right now, then go to this meeting. I've been to all my kids' schools. Um, it's like a small group, and I'm not a good small group guy. You would think maybe that I am. I'm not. And uh, I'm late. Thank God Stacy wasn't mad at me, Alex. So I want you to picture the scene. We're late. They've already started. And we peer through the glass door and it's, and it's a room not much bigger than my studio, and you've got 10 couples in there, and the headmaster and the head of marketing for the school, and they're at the front of the room. We walk in the back, and it's 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 there's not a lot of seats available, and I'm like, oh, geez. And couples are sharing. That's what I walk into. Now, understand, when I walk in this room, I don't notice another person in the world. I know there are human bodies there. But I'm not looking at them because I'm locked in on where are chairs. Go sit down, sip your coffee, and let this be over with as soon as possible. So we see two chairs to my right. And Stacy and I, so I follow Stacy to the chairs. Head down, you know, that kind of skulking thing. You're late for the meeting. So I sit down, and there's a lady next to me. She is not with a, another man, but then there's a couple to my left of her. So I'm here. Stacy's on my right. There's a lady here, and then there's a couple here. Now, I'm already a bad attitude. You're not prepared for this, Alex. Keep in mind, I've not paid attention to one person in this room. I just want to disappear. So I sit down. I have a sip of coffee. Bad attitude. And it's obvious that the couples are sharing how they got to FRA, and we're going through this whole deal, right? And and so uh, I notice about two, three minutes in, that there's the couple that's one person removed from me to my left is very, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, that kind of couple. And because I have a bad attitude, I'm like, oh, boy. You know, like, really? You're a little too enthusiastic about meet the headmaster. I just, I got it. My mind's on today. I am just I don't want to be there. So I'm like, oh, geez, Great. Can't wait to hear that couple share. Okay? Wait for it. About another minute, the guy is still mmm and mmm, and he's just super positive. And he's great. He's not doing anything really obnoxious. It's just my attitude. He leans forward. And this is my moment. You know what I'm talking about? Where you glance over, I see what I'm dealing with. I look to my left. And who is it? Mr. Positivity is none other than Keith freaking Urban. One of the biggest country stars in the world. That means the lady is Nicole freaking Kidman. And now I'm like, oh, geez. Now, this is what I want you to hear. Okay? I immediately go from, oh, geez, who's the sunshiny couple over here to, that guy's really great. Keith Urban and I are probably going to be friends now. That's where my head goes. It's instantaneous, like total attitude change. Now, you guys know I'm, I'm keeping it real, and you all would do it too. And so now I'm like, well, I got to see Nicole. But, like, she's right there. I can't just lean over and do the old, I saw you in Days of Thunder, you know, or whatever, right? So now I'm playing it cool. So my wife now finally realizes it, Alex. Like, it takes Stacy like, 30 seconds, and then she starts doing the subtle, uh, the toe tap on the back of my calf, and I'm trying to keep it cool. Like, hey, I know. Yeah, I know. I saw it. Right? Now it's our turn to share. Now I got to nail it. Because me becoming good buddies with Keith Urban is dependent on me performing well. I'm a three on the Enneagram. So, Alex, you know my three is going, whoop, whoop. Like I got, I got, I got, I got to make sure Keith remembers me because we won't be friends if he doesn't think that I'm cool. You know what I'm talking about? Like I'm just keeping it real. Like that's that's where your brain goes. You're like this. This just went from you know I got to get through this to I got to nail this. It's really true. This is what's going on. So so uh, we're late, 
And so we didn't know what it was. So it comes to Stacy. Stacy goes, "Sorry, we're late. What what is it that you you know?" And the guy goes, "Oh, no worries, you know." And I go, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm late, you know." And and I said, "I'm walking around the building. I'm like a homeless guy." And Keith Urban really laughs at that. He does the real heavy chuckle. And and I kind of look over, and Nicole leans forward like she's laughing really hard. And all of a sudden, I'm really funny. And Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman think that I'm funny. Well, you know, now it's on. Now it's like, okay, we're that much closer to becoming really good friends and going on double dates with them. Like, that, it's, it's like that, this is where my head is at, right? And and so uh, Stacy looks at me, and uh, the guy gives instructions. He says, I want you to tell us how long you've lived here and tell us about your family, how did you discover our school, and what made you choose it. That was the thing. So you know how geeked I am, Alex. Like, I'm ready to perform. I've already made a joke, and they think I'm funny. And this is my moment. But I'm like, oh, don't step on Stacy, Like, because I can absolutely step all over because I'm the performer, and I'm running my mouth all the time. So I look at Stacy, do the husband defer move, Nathan. You know what I mean? I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm popular. I got A-listers to my left who like me now, and but I'm still in the moment. I'm, I'm under control, and I'm like, I give her the head nod, and she looks at me and goes, she says out loud, no, you, you take it. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know? And uh, so I answered all the questions, and uh, it was great fun. And, uh, and and so we went on, and so then it gets to them, right? And I mean, everybody now knows, right? And so she goes, I'm Nicole, and he goes, I'm Keith, and we're all like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whatever stupid, awkward thing is, because we're all trying to play it cool. Um, And uh, so they share, and then we go to question time. And who was the first person to ask a question? Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. I mean, and 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 honestly, and when I said that they were the sunny, positive couple that was, you know, I was kind of like, really? They really were. I mean, it was fascinating. She, her first question, she goes, how can we help the school? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What she said, you know? No, I, I didn't do that. But uh, they were very kind and, and, and very, uh, it was unbelievable. So one last piece of the story. So we go through Q&A. And... Uh, it's time for the marketing guy to show us some slides and it's, you know, fluorescent lights. And so it's, you know, the, the, the presentation is washed out and who pops up on his own to the back of the room, presses the light button. It goes out. You guessed it. Keith freaking urban guys at a lister gets up, hits the lights. And the, the, the marketing guy goes, thank you to my lovely assistant. We all laugh, you know, and, uh, the rest of the story is when we broke up, um, several other couples kind of came up to us and we kind of talked to them naturally. And I'm eyeing the door like, am I going to get a chance to say hello? Didn't happen. So I don't know if we're going to be best friends. I don't know if we're going to go on double dates with Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman. But uh, I hung out with them for an hour and that's something. And uh, why do I tell the story? Number one, just to entertain you. And number two, uh, that's a great example of whether or not you're famous or not, um, to always be real and always be kind and always be authentic. And I was just truly blown away. They were just, they want to be left alone. Of course, everybody left them alone and and, and all that stuff. But uh, uh, fun story. You never know who you're going to be around. You never know um, what that experience and opportunity is. And then the last piece for me is have a better attitude because, I mean, now it's all I'm going to talk about for the next couple of days. And uh, so there you go. Uh, unnecessary content for today's show. But hopefully you enjoyed a great story. And inside my warped mind. And you'll be happy to know I didn't ask for a selfie. So that's good. This is the Ken Coleman Thanks Show. Thanks for listening to the Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts. And watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.